Hello and welcome to Unheard News, I'm Florence Reed. After the invasion of Ukraine, formal economic sanctions were ordered by Western governments to punish Putin's inner circle. Then something strange happened. Smaller institutions and even individuals took it upon themselves to sanction everyday Russians, even those living abroad. Here in England, cultural and social sanctions on Russians have gone from cancelling Tchaikovsky concerts to banning players from Wimbledon all the way to the story we have for you today. Elena Ledneva, a woman living with her husband and young child in the UK, applied for a master's course in hospitality at the University of West London. She had decades of experience in running events, including welcoming international delegates to the Sochi Winter Olympics, so on paper she would seem to be the ideal candidate. But she was rejected last week. Why? Well, it seems for being Russian. She joins us now to tell us about it. Hi, Elena. Hello. Hello. So this was the email you received from the university last week. Dear Elena, we are writing to inform you that as per university policy in response to recent events and situation in Ukraine, we will not be in the position to process your application further. We are very sorry about these unfortunate circumstances. Yours sincerely, the international team at the University of West London. So can I just ask you what you first thought when you got that email? Uh, well, there were two thoughts, I guess. Uh, the first one was it's uh, totally unreasonable uh, because I don't see how the situation in Ukraine can influence, uh, you know, my application in the University of West London. And uh, the second thought was uh, like, is it a joke? Uh, because uh, I've heard some stories, you know, of um, a Russian getting some some not pleasant things here, but it wasn't uh, to my friends or to me personally. So it was uh, somehow felt in the air, but I didn't expect uh, to get it, you know, in my personal experience. Have you experienced anything else like this while you've been in London? No, uh, fortunately not. It was the first case and I hope the last one. <laughs> so what did you do next? I assume you complained or try to contact the university? Uh, yes. Yeah, so first of all, as I was, you know, a bit shocked and surprised and frustrated at the same time. So I did the screenshot of this email and I sent it to my husband and to my friends, you know, just to see uh, what their reaction will be. And as I have some uh, friends here in London uh, from uh, the universities as well, they're professors in different universities of London. Uh, so they told me it's totally illegal and um, I should, you know, reply to them and um, uh, ask to provide the policy. Uh, according uh, to this, they decided, you know, to reject my application. So when I looked at the policy of the University of West London, this might be a, a time to bring it out, they do stipulate that they admit candidates who have the potential to succeed, this is from their website, on their chosen course regardless of their background. Applicants to the university are considered on the basis of their merits, abilities and potential regardless of gender, ethnic origin, age, disability, religion, sexual orientation and social class. So that to me seems that origin would include your nationality. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, uh, I, I saw this policy before I applied to this university and also I uh, visited the campus. I came for the open day and I talked to the admission team and actually at that time they were really, you know, helpful and friendly and I told them by that time that I was Russian and nothing was uh, appeared you know, like, uh, no, so they, they didn't tell me uh, when we were meeting in person that uh, I'm not allowed, you know, to apply. They were really helpful f through the application for CDA and I didn't expect that to be happened, actually. When you challenged them on this, when you wrote to them and asked them what the policy was that had allowed them to reject you on the basis of being Russian, what, what did they tell you? What was their excuse? So what they um, answered uh, to me uh, first uh, was uh, they had um, Russia on the red list for visas. So they have like uh, trouble issuing visas right now. 
uh, and then they uh, kind of say sorry, it was a mistake, and it doesn't mean that your application is not on the process right now. Right. So, so instead of them sanctioning you personally, they blamed it on the government sanctioning Russians and therefore that causing visa problems for, for students. Yes. Okay. Yes. But it wasn't my case actually because I'm on already London based and I have my visa which um, uh, provides me, you know, to study and work here. And uh, so there is, there was, uh, there was never a case of a visa issue in my particular uh, case. So this is interesting as well, Elena, because when I contacted the university, they told me something slightly different to that. They didn't mention visas. Um, in a statement, I asked them actually if they'd like to send somebody from the university to speak to us, um, because I thought it might be nice for you to be able to speak to them directly, but they turned me down. Um, instead, they sent me this statement. They said, in an isolated and unacceptable incident, an individual staff member sent invalid rejection emails to a total of three prospective students in breach of the University of West London's published admissions policy. The university has contacted each applicant to apologize and inform them their application is still ongoing. This error did not impact any other Russian students who have outstanding applications or who are set to join us in September. So they're saying there that in fact it was just an individual in the admissions team who went rogue and sent out three rejections based on, I suppose, a misguided political belief or simply out of ignorance. And they actually have retracted that now. The statement that you just read, uh, actually this statement they only gave to the uh, journalist, not to the applicants, only after the uh, you know inquiry that the university uh, revealed that there were two other applicants and uh, being rejected uh, the same uh, way as me. And yeah, they, they told that it was one, one member of staff who did that. I mean, you would think that there would be more of a kind of chain of command for sending out acceptances or rejections. That's quite a big part of university admissions policy. I, I don't imagine there is one person who is in control of doing that entirely. There, there must be oversight there. So. Do you believe their excuse? Do you think that they are telling the truth? I mean, I, I can't be sure, you know, 100%. But for me, it sounds a bit uh, not convincing. I'm happy that um, it's not only about myself, you know. I mean, I, I thought it was uh, unreasonable and unfair. Uh, because I had uh, already made, you know, plans uh, to move closer to the university. So I was thinking how I would, you know, study one year and then get a job. I mean, I have some uh, some plans with that. <laughs> and then you just got rejected for no reason. And um, you need to, to, you know, find another way, another path. So the original email actually uses the word Ukraine. It doesn't just talk about Russia. It, it talks about the conflict that's happening in Ukraine. And it seems crazy that I have to ask you this, but do you support the situation in Ukraine? Do you support Putin's invasion? No, I don't support it. Uh, I mean, uh, I think it's, it's uh, horrifying events that uh, happening right now on the planet Earth. And it's unfortunately uh, evolves my country as well uh, being uh, aggressive to to another country and for me it's um, it's kind of sorry it's um, unbelievable to see that in 2022 and i don't support any you know uh, force going conflicts on earth and especially this one. Every human who has, you know, like critical thinking and um, love and empathy to people, they would never support that. And the University of West London early on in the, the conflict did put out a statement saying that they supported Russians who inside Russia or abroad were resisting uh, the Kremlin, resisting Putin's decisions in Ukraine. So this seems like a very, very odd decision. If you are vocally critical 
of Putin. And they are saying that because of the situation in Ukraine, they cannot take your application. Well, that does seem to be kind of um, painting all Russians with quite a broad brush. I don't know what they were thinking when they did what they did. I mean, it's really, it's really sad that, you know, just people got uh, into... Um, uh, it, uh, got into the middle, you know, of the situation and got harmed by different means. Uh, because it's not only about Russians, there are lots of people in the post-Soviet, you know, area uh, who speaks Russian and uh, uh, like foreigners, they can't recognize are they Russians, are they Lithuanian, are they Ukrainian. So, I mean, <laughs> when people want to be aggressive, they could be aggressive to, you know, any Russian speaking uh, people. And it's it's totally, you know, weird. Why would you do that? And why, why, why do you spread hate? Uh, and uh, like hate from the beginning, it caused, you know, the, the, this conflict. And people just, uh, tr instead of trying, you know, to help, they, they, they <laughs> want to spread more hate around the world. Part of me thinks we should go one step further as well and, and say, I suppose, even if there was a Russian who theoretically supported Putin's invasion of Ukraine, would that mean that they could not study in a university in London? I suppose, do we ask Chinese students what their position is on the treatment of Uyghur Muslims in their, in their home country? Is this a good precedent to set where we need to demand certain uh, political proclamations from people from international communities about their own home governments? Yeah, I think uh, like um, if people want to ban other, like to ban some certain nationalities from studying, uh, how could we, you know, avoid these um, uh, these uh, terrible conflicts in the future? If if, if people just uh, can't get into education and learn more and uh, get into real international community and, you know, talk to other people and find out what's going on and what people, you know, think and see. Um, I, I don't see that banning from education can uh, somehow help or, you know, stop what's going on. It's only get it worse. Does this make you feel differently about the university? If they were now to offer you a place on this hospitality course, would you, would you take it? Uh, it's a good and complicated question, actually, uh, for me right now, because uh, like uh, day after day, uh, once that happened, uh, I was changing my mind. It's ironic, I suppose, to me that you were studying in hospitality and you had such an inhospitable reaction from this university. Um, what advice might you offer to the University of West London to be more hospitable in the future? Yeah, good, good point. Um, well, act from the uh, from the basic principles of humanity, uh, like love, support, and being, you know, um, reasonable. Well, we've got a job going in the events team here at Unheard, so perhaps we'll send you the application for that, and you can uh, have a go at that instead. Okay, that would be great. Thank you so much. That was Elena Ledneva prospective student at the University of West London, rejected and then unrejected for being a Russian national. Good luck to Elena in the rest of her studies. I hope she finds somewhere welcoming to take her on. Thanks to you for watching. This was Unheard.